question number 23 of a statistic question we are told the, the marks scored by 40 student in a mathematics test were as follow as shown in the table below so we have the marks they are classified like 48 to 52 53 to 57 on and on to 73 to 77 uh, so part a find the lower class boundary of the model class so the model class is that class that has the highest frequency the, the, the frequency here is the number of student so this is the class that has the highest uh, frequency and the class uh, uh, the class boundary is uh, we subtract 0 0.5 for 63 uh, so you can say class boundary is equals to uh, 60 uh, can say 62.5 that is a class boundary of uh, Moodle class uh, part B using an assumed mean of 64 calculate the mean mark and you get three marks so assumed mean uh, or the working mean or in another word we call it the working mean for you to be able to work this efficiently, you need to make a table uh, that has the class, the midpoint, the, the, the deviation, and so forth, so that uh, you'll be able to work comfortable. So what I'll do is I'll insert a table here. Uh, so you just draw a table using your hand, but because I am limited with the space, I have prepared my table and I'm going to show you how you fill the table. So this is a table that uh, you, you need to prepare. This is just to make your work easier. I have already inserted the classes. So here is a midpoint. And to get the midpoint, you need to subtract the upper class uh, uh, limit. You subtract the uh, lower class limit. For example, uh, you have 52. You subtract 48. That should give you 4. You divide by 2 you get it is equals to 2 so you add 2 to 48 so here you get 50 uh, you add 2 you get 55 uh, you get 60 you get 65 you get 70 you get 75 from there uh, since the, our working mean assumed the mean is equals to 64 uh, we subtract, uh, uh, this is our x, we subtract uh, the midpoint, uh, you must subtract 64 from the midpoint, so 60, 50 minus 64 you will be left with minus 14, this you will be left with minus 9, uh, this you will be left with minus 4, here you have 1, uh, here you have uh, uh, 70, you have 6, and here you have 11. Frequency we have already been given in the in our table. So we just copy that. So we have 3, we have 4, we have 10, we have 12, uh, we have 8, and we have 3. Then we multiply the frequency times the deviation, that is FD, and this you get, it is minus 42. Uh, this you get minus 36. Uh, this you get minus 40 uh, here you get 12 uh, then here you get uh, you multiply you get uh, uh, 48 uh, then you need you you find here it is that the three uh, the other one is accumulative frequency to get the cumulative frequency you just add up the frequency so you start with three three plus four is seven seven plus uh, ten is seventeen 17 plus 12 you get 29 uh, 29 plus uh, 8 you get 37 37 plus 3 you get 40 uh, the, to the cum total of the cumulative frequency should be equals to the sum of the frequency that is the last uh, uh, value of the cumulative frequency uh, here because we need to, uh, if you look at the, 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 the nini, we are supposed to draw the cumulative frequency table. So we fill the cumulative frequency uh, uh, column. So we have the, this one, the, the upper class uh, boundar uh, uh, boundary is 52.5. Uh, this is uh, 57.5. 
uh, this is uh, 62 uh, point 0.5 uh, this is uh, 70 uh, 67.5 uh, 67.5 then we have 60 uh, 72.5 and finally we have uh, 77.5 so with these values we should be able to do Roman number 2 of uh, uh, part B, that part C, that is, uh, we draw the cumulative frequency curve. Uh, we draw the cumulative frequency curve. Uh, we use the cumulative frequency against the uh, uh, the upper class boundary. So let's go ahead and do that. So this this is the grid that I'm going to use. Uh, we can start from zero. Uh, the, along the y-axis we put uh, the cumulative frequency so there we have uh, we have 10 we have uh, 20 we have 30 and we have 40 uh, you note that the cumulative frequency goes up to 30 to 40 rather uh, then here we can put a zigzag line to show that our our uh, upper class limit uh, boundary does not start from zero we since our 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 low our class limit start at uh, lower class area uh, boundary sta start from 52.25 we can start with the lower one to, so we say it is 47.5 uh, so that we come to uh, now we have 52.5 uh, then we have uh, 57.5 uh, we have uh, uh, 57 we have uh, 62.5 62.5 uh, we have uh, 67.5 67.5 uh, then we have uh, 72.5 and 77.5 and that is a uh, our class boundary uh, class boundary this is a uh, can change that to class boundary uh, upper class boundary so from there we now plot our graphs uh, so we start with the uh, 57 uh, 52.5 the cumulative frequency is 2 uh, so we can come and uh, get our point 2 is there uh, 57 we cumulative frequency is 7 uh, so our 7 is uh, there uh, then uh, we have us uh, at uh, 62.5 we have 70, 17 so 17 uh, is there uh, then we have at uh, 67.5 we have 29 so here we have uh, this is uh, 29 uh, then we have uh, 7 uh, that is a uh, uh, 72.5 we have that is 7 we have that is 7 uh, ok uh, let's correct this is 29 uh, not uh, that is 29 the other one is 37 uh, so that is 7 that's at 5 that is 6 that is 7 and 77.5 uh, uh, we have finally 40 uh, so what we do is uh, we are going to join uh, uh, these points to come up with a cumulative frequency curve which we also refer to as the OGIF. So that is our cumulative frequency curve which we also call the OGIF and when you do that you get yourself 3 marks. So the last part, uh, use the graph to estimate the semi interquartile range. Uh, so, so quarter range is when we divide our data into four equal times and because our total data are 40 uh, the lower class the lower quarter is at 10 so we read the value that is uh, at 10 correspond to 10 uh, this value here and uh, if you read that value correctly uh, you'll be able to get uh, that is uh, you'll be able to get uh, it is uh, around uh, around uh, that is uh, around 59 uh, so q 
Uh, that is, uh, you, you signed Q1 is equal to around 59. Uh, Q2, you read the value that corresponds with 30 uh, here. You read that value. And when you read that value, you find it is about uh, 69. Uh, this is plus or minus 0 0.5. Uh, plus or minus 0 0.5 uh, so we can say interquartile range uh, range is equals to uh, six, six, uh, you can say 60 uh, this one is coming to 68 so it is 68 minus 59 which divide by 2 which is equals to 4.5 so that's how you do that so by doing this, you have earned uh, or scored uh, 10 marks. Uh, if you have uh, followed, if you follow the, all the steps that we have done. So let's now see a look at uh, what, uh, where you score marks from the examiner marking the, your paper, a question like this one. So in part A, you get a bonus point, one point for stating or writing the class boundary of the Moodle class. Part B, you you get one mark, one mark for the method, uh, but you find that the way it is presented here, uh, it is not very clear. That is why I recommended that we make a table because now uh, how do you get 42 from 64? That means you have done a lot of background work. Uh, which you may end up getting the getting it wrong you get another mark for calculating the mean that is the method and you get uh, one mark for the answer so this is the method uh, this is the mark for the method and this is the mark for the answer uh, this is a method mark and this is the bonus um, mark so you get uh, four marks in that section here you get one mark for preparing the table or, or creating uh, the cumulative frequency. So you get one bonus mark. So in this section, uh, you get one mark for protein. Uh, that is uh, uh, for the protein uh, that is using the right scale and so forth. You get an another mark for the curve, the smoothness and uh, if it fits the points that you you have uh, identified then you get a bonus point uh, when you identify the lower quarter and the upper quarter you get a method mark when you use uh, you get the uh, interquarter semi interquarter range uh, that is uh, when you, how you do it and finally you get the one mark for the answer which is 4.5 totaling to 10 marks so here they have used a different kind of a graph or grid so it depends on uh, the graph that you have been given in the exam otherwise you choose the appropriate scale and that is how you do that question